I talk about validations. This to me validates that soil health is taking place. Yeah. Right here. Would you want to introduce yourself and sure. talk a little bit about where we are? Thank you very much. Yeah. We are sitting in West Central Indiana, uh, Warren County, Indiana. I'm a fifth generation farmer. My, my great great grandparents homesteaded here in the early 1880s. So I am, am proud to be continuing on the legacy of the Clarks. Uh, we've made some major changes to the farm, but, but, but for the good. Uh, we used to be high intensive t uh, tillers of the soil and up until about 15 years ago we became no tillers and then 10 years ago we became cover crop. Mm -hmm. So as of today we are 100% no till, 100% cover crop and we farm green. You obviously have such a well established cover crop system and you know which crops it's are It's very advanced. Together. How, when did that all start? When did you first think, you know, you know, back in the 90s and the 80s, there was a time in agriculture when we were really focusing on yields. Right. What's going to give us the best yield? And for right. you, when you thought to yourself, well, maybe something should be on the soil mm -hmm. all the time, you kind of had to put yielding it's way on back. the back burner. Way back. Yield, what was that? Yield mindset? is not even one of my drivers that, that drives this system. It, yield is not. Um, soil health. It's all about building soil health and maintaining that soil health. What got me into this, Mother Nature has been very kind to me and she has been nudging me on where I need to be headed. For example, I was very lucky and my first attempt at cover crops was a huge success. So that whetted my appetite to continue on. Right. So I was lucky I didn't have a failure. Right. I had a success. The cover crops we put down on our very first field that following uh, fall, that was the best yielding corn we had on the farm. So I immediately knew this is where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Now at that point in my thinking, yield was all I was looking at. That was so wrong. Yeah. Today it's about building soil health and creating diversity. Mm -hmm. We have to have as much diversity as we possibly can get across these fields. And what I mean by diversity is, is a cash crop rotation, so a corn, soybean, corn, soybean, it just isn't quite a good enough rotation. Sure. Diversity also with cover crop species. We need multiple species, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 species at a time yeah. to give our microbial biome the diversity that it needs to maintain this soil health. So my first cocktail that I advise to anybody is a, is a three-way cocktail and it, it consists of, of oats, uh, sorghum sudan, and tillage radish. I use those three for many reasons, but the main reason why those three are picked is because they all three will winter kill. So there's nothing to worry about next spring of termination wise. So take an 80 acre field, take half of it, and don't till it anymore and try my method. Do the other half, the other 40, in your method. You're tilling, this is bean stubble we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you're going to till the bean stubble, you're going to do your normal stuff, and keep track of the expenses here. Mm -hmm. Look at what this is going to cost, my system versus your system. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing I'm really changing is, we've taken the, the a tillage pass out in the fall, and we're not doing any tillage passes in the spring, and we've given it one year of a fairly easy cover crop, and all I'm asking you to do is no-till your corn into that. That's it. Yeah. And see what, you don't have to, I don't have to out-yield that other system, but look at where I am on cost relationship. I am extremely low. Right. So their system is gonna have to out-yield me by several bushels just to break even. Right. I'm always asked, Rick, what's the yield drag on this system? There isn't any. 
Sure. So if we're not talking yields, somebody does this and they're going on maybe five, ten years of doing this, or even just a couple years, and they're mm -hmm. also soil sampling. Mm -hmm. What are they looking for? They're still looking for the same things. Yeah. I still soil sample religiously because I am running a fine line here. If my system is crashing, I need to know now, okay? So we soil sample half of the farm every year. And then I have a realistic, I, I'm going to stress that word, realistic yield goal, yeah. and I only fertilize to that goal. So I'm not being reckless. I'm not over applying. I mean, this is all about conservation. Mm -hmm. So we're not only building soil health, but we're being good stewards to the land and we're conserving our streams and our waterways and then ultimately the Gulf of Mexico. So not only am I eliminating any of those runoffs because I don't use any of those products, but when I do use a nitrogen source, I'm only applying what I think that corn crop needs to get me mm -hmm. to a comfortable spot. And you're growing a lot of legumes, right? You're yes. mixing in peas, you're, mis you're mixing in things that are fixing nitrogen yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So, that's what so you're now doing. comes the pea that your company is starting to develop, and I can finish all my nitrogen needs with, with this pea. pea. Yeah. This is exciting to me. I didn't mention this earlier, but we are transitioning our farm to organic, okay? Mm -hmm. Right now, we have our first 400 acres has been certified. That's a big deal. That's a big hurdle to get over. Next year, we're going to certify 500, then it'll be 1,500, and then it's going to be the whole farm. Mm -hmm. I need help because I'm out there, way out there, and this pea fulfills my system now. I'm very excited about this. We are very excited, too. I do have a question for you on... You're no-tilling when it comes to the soon-to-be organic land. Mm -hmm. Are you going to continue to mm -hmm. no-till? Yeah. What have you learned with that, or you know, what are you experimenting with? What Again, the cover crops. Yeah. Okay, I know, I know, the farmers are being inundated with, with multiple modes of chemical action on multiple passes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I just don't buy into that. If we we've got some of the worst weeds on the planet, we've got mare's tail and we've got water hemp. If I throw out 100 to 120 pounds of cereal rye, planted in the fall, drilled in the fall, we will not have those weeds in those fields. To me, that tells a lot. Again, it's working with Mother Nature. And the, the one thing that I stress is slow down and validate and look for the validations. Okay, here's a validation for you. I don't need any test to tell me this. We have not applied any ag lime in five years. And our average pH is 6.8 and rising. That validates to me the system's working. We're taking the acid out and we're taking the salt out. Sure did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's transition a little bit. And regenerative agriculture is a term that's blown up all over. It's thrown around a lot. It's the new fancy word. What is your, what do you define regenerative agriculture as? Okay, I, I believe my system is, is truly regenerative ag. We are taking the cover crops well into their growth stages to maximize what that cover crop was intended to do for me. If it's a cereal rye, I intend for it to be an erosion control and a sequester of nutrients. If it's a legume, I'm wanting it to fix nitrogen. So why in the world would I want to terminate that on April the 2nd? I don't. I want it to go into May. Mm -hmm. And now I've doubled, tripled, quadrupled the amount of nutrient load that species has either sequestered or fixed. Mm -hmm. That only benefits me. Now, with that all being said, I am putting down so much more biomass. That's where this all is headed here, biomass. The more biomass I lay down, the more feed I have to feed the microbes, the better my system is regenerating what's going on. It's beyond a trend. Now, this is what I typically tell people when I speak at, at, at wherever people want me to come and speak to them. I am way over to the side over here. You don't have to come over and meet me over there. 
meet me halfway. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you're not going to eliminate all of your fertilizers. That's mm -hmm. fine. At least greatly reduce them. Mm -hmm. Only use what we need to use. Things like that. That's great. This fly is killing me I here. Know, they're all it's killing me. <laughs> um, but the point is, do something. And at least get into a system that's comfortable for you and your mindset. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to sleep at night. Definitely. And I'm the first to admit, I'm very radical. Most people may not agree with everything I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm being too hard on this. Uh, the, my system's going to crash. I don't know if it is or not. I can't guarantee that. I'm monitoring it very closely. You don't have to come all the way to me. Please meet me halfway and it'll be a better world.